the previous video, we very briefly introduced to ANOVA, and now we're going to get into more of the details, more of the notation. All right, so remember that in 2A ANOVA, we have two categorical variables. So every measurement has two categorical variables associated with it. So like if our um, categorical variables are the water temperature and the brand of detergents, and every measurement that we take, every experiment that we run, we will have some detergent that we're using, whatever brand, Kirkland, Tide, whatever, and then the water temperature, so cold, warm, or hot. All right, so each measurement has two attributes. All right, so if we want, we could look at a bunch of different things. We could look at the average dirt removed by each detergent by averaging over the different water temperatures, or we could average over the different detergents to look at the average amount of dirt removed by each water temperature. And then finally, if we have more than one observation for each one of those water temp detergent brand combos, then we can take the average for each one of those combos so that we can say like, okay, the average amount of dirt removed by tide in warm water is this much. But we can only take an average, right, if we have more than one observation for each one of those combos. Um, and it'll make it a little bit easier on the notation. At first, we looked at one observation per combo. So we actually won't be able to answer this third question here quite yet. We'll get to that in a little bit though. So for now we're going to set things up so that we can look at the average dirt removed by each detergent and the average dirt removed by each water temperature. Okay, so let's generalize this more. So let's say that we have two factors, not just water temp and the brand of detergent. Let's say that we have factor A and factor B. Factor A has A categories or levels. Factor B has B categories or levels. All right, so we're going to denote each observation by Xij. So Xij, we're going to assume, has a normal distribution with mean mu ij and variance sigma squared. And again, just like in the one-way ANOVA, we're going to assume that sigma squared is a shared variance. All right, so we're going to have one observation per combo, so that means we'll have i equals 1 through a and j equals 1 through b. So in other words, this first subscript, the i, that's for factor a, the second subscript, b, that's for factor, the second subscript is j, and that's for factor b. Okay, so since we have one observation per combo, then if we take the number of levels in a and the number of levels in b, that's going to be our overall sample size. All right, so we said that we could look at the average dirt removed by each detergent and the average dirt removed by each water temperature. So in other words, let's find the mean for each level of factor A and the mean for each level of factor B. All right, so if we're looking at the ice level of factor A, then we're looking for the mean for the ice level and we're going to uh, average over all of the different J's. So this would be like, we're finding the average dirt removed by each detergent and we're averaging over all the different water temperatures. Okay, so this X bar I dot is one divided by B, which is the number of levels in factor B. We're going to add up all the temperatures, sorry, all the observations X, I, J, where this I and that I are the same. So we're adding up over all the J's. Okay, similar thing for our factor B, if we're going to look for the mean for the jth level of B, we'll denote that by x bar dot j. So we'll add up all the observations for that jth level and all the different levels for the first factor. So we add all those up, divide by the sample size, which is A, which is the number of levels in factor A. And then our overall mean, we're just going to add up all of our observations for all of the, all of the levels in B and all of the levels in A, and then we're going to divide by our sample size, which is one over A times B. All right, so we've got most of our notation down, so now we can define like the total sum of squares and all that stuff. So the total sum of squares, remember, is going to be, we're going to take each one of these observations and find the distance between it and the mean, that overall grand mean. So we find that distance, square it, add all of those up, and that's our total sum of squares. So this is pretty much a very 
direct extension of the one-way ANOVA. All right, so if we manipulate this a little bit, we'll end up getting that this total sum of squares is equal to D times this sum, which is saying, let's look at the variability for the um, different levels in A. So we'll look at, okay, the first level in A, and take that mean and subtract off the grand mean, find that distance there, square it, add all those up. So we're going to find, we're going to be looking at the variability among the means for factor A. Here we're going to be looking at the variability for the means for factor B, so that's a similar thing. And then here we're going to be looking at xij minus the mean for the ith level of A minus the mean for the jth level of B minus that overall grand mean. Okay, so this is, um, this part here is like what we would predict xij to be, and this is what it actually is. So it's again, same thing as usual, like observed minus predicted. So we take that, observed, subtract off the group mean, square it, and then add all of those up. All right, so we're going to call this P SS A. This piece is SSB, then that final piece is SSE. So this is the sum of squares for factor A, this is the sum of squares for factor B, and the, this is the sum of squares due to error. All right, so we're going to use this notation to move forward and actually like get our test statistics and distributions and all that sort of stuff in the next video.